Hey guys, it's Marta, and today I'll be reviewing the book The Leaderless Revolution. Behind me is different because that's my sister's side of the room, but it still looks cool. The Leaderless Revolution is nonfiction. It's by a former British diplomat uh, named Karn Carney Ross. I think it's Carney Ross. Maybe it's Karn. I'm not sure. I can't pronounce authors' names. This is really bad. Basically, it's a. It was actually a really interesting read because. I don't read a lot of nonfiction and I'm trying to do that more because nonfiction is very important to like learning stuff and stuff is important so how ordinary people will take power and change politics in the 21st century and I think that's cool. He was a former British diplomat. He did a lot of things involved in Iraq and the invasion of Iraq. Lots of international relation kind of stuff. In the book, he draws upon his own experiences to kind of prove several points where government isn't always needed for every single bit of action that needs to take place. His basic idea is people can't keep waiting on the government to do something if they want something to change. And he proves a lot of like his ideas, or he sets a lot of his ideas in his own experiences with politics. He's not for anarchy, um, that's actually one of the topics he covers in here is anarchy. And that's not what, that's not what this book is about. This book is uh, about getting people to, instead of just waiting on somebody else to do work for them, do the work themselves to make a better future or a better world that we live in. Because, I mean, that's actually pretty logical, because do you know how long it takes to get a bill into action, like in the US, because that's the only politics I vaguely know. It takes a really long time to get a bill passed, it takes a really long time to get a law passed. Like, you'll spend years and years trying to petition the government to do something about an issue, and our problem is, number one, it takes forever for the government to do anything. Sorry, government. Who? We need to come up with the solutions. We can't just tell the government to do something and not give them, like, a suggestion for what to do. Like, feed poor people. How are you gonna do that? Come up with solutions yourselves, and then you go out and make them happen. That's, like, that's something I really like about this book. I'm a part of the Harry Potter Alliance, and if you haven't heard of that, Google it. It's pretty awesome organization that basically they use parallels from Harry Potter and other pop culture like Hunger Games and Sherlock and Doctor Who and a lot of these other nerdy stuff and they use those parallels to kind of educate people especially young people and kind of get them more motivated to be more involved in their communities and learn about issues in their society. Some people they just uh, they'll have like petitions which you know Petitions is a great way to raise awareness of something, but it doesn't actually do anything. So what this book provides is kind of like, that. there's actually at the end of it, there's like a step-by-step, -step, like, I think it's like nine steps, of how to spur action. And basically, you know, it's like, find something you care about. Um, and then, you know, from there on, he kind of explains, like, an effective way to actually do stuff. Because it's kind of cool. He was on the inside of politics, so he kind of knows how it works and how to get things to happen. So I'll take his advice. I'm not, like, a politic person. I actually used to want to be on the UN, though, so maybe I'm kind of biased. I like international relations. I am all for making the world a much better place. That is one of my bigger goals. I highly suggest this to people who kind of want to learn a little bit about politics, you know, how it works, because you're hearing it from somebody who's actually in it. Uh, a little bit about modern history, which I think is kind of cool to know what's going on in the world. And also, for people who are seeking to make something change in the world, like, I'm really pro-environment. I'm really for good education and literacy, and I'm really, I feel very strongly about lots of issues. The only way those issues are going to be resolved is by people coming together, working together, not relying on some person that you don't even get to talk to. No, working together to come up with a solution to a problem, and all these little groups working on a bunch of different problems, and what do you know? problems get fixed. I can go off on a giant rant about politics and activism stuff. I highly suggest this. It's 
not that long of a book. Although, I mean, it, you know, nonfiction, it takes longer to get through nonfiction than fiction. I think it's really worth the read, and it kind of, you know, the world we live in today, people trust government, their government less and less. People are always complaining about politics, right? This, I think, provides a good segue into instead of, like, being a little bit hopeless about a lot of things, instead being a bit more like, oh, okay. This is something that I can solve. This is something that I can fix. I don't have to wait for anybody else to fix the problems for me because I see it, I know how to fix it, and I'm going to make it happen. And I like that attitude. In other news, I plan on reading The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes or whatever. I'm not sure if that's all of them. I don't think it is. Read a couple of other books because I got them for Christmas and I want to read them. Um, and that includes The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, The House of Hades, Rick Riordan, and The Red Pyramid from the Kane Chronicles by Rick Riordan as well. So many books, so little time. Oh, and The Star Won't Go Out, which I mentioned in my last video, or talked a lot about in my last video, and that is, I'm halfway through it actually, and it's really good. And I do highly recommend it. I actually recommended it to a librarian the other day while I was at the library getting more books. But it is New York Times bestseller this week, number seven, I believe. And, uh, you know, I, I recommend it because it's awesome. Alright.